Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm going to tell you how you can gain access to 15 countries, more or less, with one passport. Actually, five passports that can give you, each of them, access to 15 countries. So, we are going to discuss a little-known region, or lesser-known region, anyway, in the world. And there's actually a few of these, so I'll just touch on them briefly. But that uh, you have, instead of just the right to live in one country, you have the right to at least to some extent, uh, live in another country. So the place we're most familiar with, of course, is the European Union, right? In the European Union, EU citizens have the right to live, work, etc., in any of the EU countries. Well, today we're going to talk about an area called CARICOM. Uh, there's some other things in GCC, and you know, there's a few, few different areas in that regard. But anyway, today we're going to talk about CARICOM. So I'll go through what is CARICOM, what are the countries, how do you gain access, etc and how it might be applicable to you. So before we do that, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the all notifications. If you're interested in these subjects, please you know check out some of our other previous videos. If you'd like help with tax optimization, getting a second citizenship, setting up residency elsewhere, forming companies, opening bank accounts, optimizing asset protection, et cetera, please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, calendly.com forward slash Michael Dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below. Or send us, a web, uh, send us a message through our website, offshorecitizen.net or offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, let's dive in. So CARICOM, what is this? This is a league of 15 nations, plus I think it's, I'm going to pull up here the exact number for you guys, uh, associate members. There is five associate members, okay? And these are basically Caribbean nations, and it makes sense. This is quite nice because... You know, every little Caribbean nation is a small island with not too many people on it, not a lot of uh, capability. Now, technically, this isn't actually all islands. I'll cover that in a minute, which are the members. But individually, they don't have that much going for them. And, you know, not only kind of politically insignificant, but you're also in a situation where hurricanes come in and they have a lot of trouble. So it's nice that they have this, uh, this thing called CARICOM which is this league. And so I'm going to go through which countries are. So the countries that are members of CARICOM are Antigua and Barbuda, Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, Montserrat, St. Lucia, St. Nevis and, or St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, so those 15 countries. In addition to that, there are associate members, which are Anguilla, Bermuda, British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, and Turks and Caicos. So it gives you a little bit of an idea. Now, the first 15 are the ones who are important. You may have noticed that all five of the Caribbean citizenship by investment countries are listed in there. So Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis. Okay, all are members of CARICOM. And this is really great. Because if you're a citizen of a CARICOM country, you have special rights in the other CARICOM countries. You're not a full citizen. You aren't entitled to permanent residency or to citizenship there. But uh, you can immediately go there and stay for an extended period of time. You also have, in a bunch of cases, uh, freedom of movement for labor. So you can actually go and work as well. Now, many people may not want to work, but it may help you uh, kind of do some transition. The, it's actually a, so much like the EU, you have sub-treaties within the major treaty. And so actually Haiti, Montserrat, and Bahamas are not included in that freedom of, uh, free movement of labor, I think is what they call it, uh, treaty. However, generally speaking, uh, a person has the ability, if they're in one of these countries, to go. You, have to, you do actually, like, much like in the case of the EU, you have the right to go and live in some other country, but it's not like you just go and live there. You do actually have some paperwork to go through, etc. if you want to stay beyond an initial period. And similar sort of thing in uh, the CARICOM countries. You have the right to pursue work in any of those places, but you do have to uh, do an application and get your skills recognized in the other place, etc. So anyway, why is this relevant? Well, this is relevant because I often have people who come to me and usually when somebody reaches out looking for a second citizenship, they're not planning on living in one of these Caribbean islands. There's some ex uh, exceptions. I've had you know, a couple occasions where somebody was going to live in Antigua somewhere. They're interested in Granada, Dominica, or something like this. But most of the time when I'm talking to people, 
they are not actually planning on living in those countries. Although, to be fair, one of the confusions that some people have is some people think because they're buying a citizenship there, they need to live there. You don't. You, these are totally separate. In fact, with the exception of Antigua, you never even need to go and visit those countries. This being said, a lot of people are saying, look, you know, I don't plan on living there, but what if things get bad in some place? What if I need a plan B? I'd like to know that the place that I'm able to go is good plan B. And so, for example, Granada is below kind of the hurricane uh, region, and it's a little bit farther south, and as a result, offers a little bit of appeal for some people if they want to go stay there. Now, the truth is, because it's a CARICOM country, you can in all likely gain access there anyway. And so, from that standpoint, you know, you get a little bit more freedom than you might expect. And this is one of the benefits of Caribbean passports over, say, Vanuatu. So Vanuatu, we've discussed in previous videos, you know, pretty fast program, pretty easy program, but doesn't give this kind of benefit. So anyway, this is the basic idea of CARICOM. There are a couple others, like I mentioned, GCC, uh, obviously similar to the EU, and I'll maybe talk about them in the future, but I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea and helps you with, uh, you know, making a decision of where you might like to have a passport. So. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below as always. If you have suggestions, I would love to hear from them, you on them. And please send me uh, a message if you would like any other assistance. And I'm going to see you on the next video.